In this week's web video fishing forecast for New England, we've got updates on trout stocking as they continue through Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. We're done some pretty good holdover striped bass action that's actually getting to be a little bit better with some bigger fish starting to mix in in southern New England. Uh, check on the herring status in Connecticut. A special giveaway in light of the upcoming opening of blackfish season across southern New England and much, much more. Check it out. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Hey there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of The Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video fishing forecast. Uh, before I get into the reports and everything else, just want to remind you, you got uh, about a, a week, actually just a hair less than a week, to take advantage of a special spring subscription that we here at the Fisherman Magazine are running. It's good through March 31st, where we're knocking five bucks off a one-year print subscription. Now, this is good for all new, renewed, as well as gift subscriptions. So for just $24.95, you get access to all the awesome content, both print and digital, that comes with a Fisherman Magazine subscription, as well as free entry into both of our big region-wide tournaments and the uh, black drum battle down in New Jersey, Delaware Bay. So as those region-wides go, we've got the Coastal Kayak Clash, which while we'll have the complete details on it in the April issue, will be your chance this year to win a brand new Hobie Outback Kayak. Uh, big news right there. Again, complete details in April. And then, of course, we have our flagship fishing tournament, the Dream Boat Challenge re returns, excuse me, for 2021. And this year, uh, once again, Steigercraft is our title sponsor. And we are giving away an absolutely amazing 255 center console, fully rigged out. All the details on both of these tournaments are going to be available in the April edition of the Fisherman Magazine out next week. So jump on it now. Get your subscription, $5 off. You can go right over to the page, upper right-hand corner of your screen right now we got a direct link over there take care of it don't delay save five bucks get all the awesome benefits that comes with being a member of the fisherman magazine all right i'm gonna get into the reports now I'm gonna start up in massachusetts where uh, spring trout stocking continues along that seems to be the big news up there everybody i'm talking to uh division of fish and wildlife began moving west a little bit as i've been telling you the last couple of weeks it's primarily been Cape Cod to as far inland as Plymouth or so. Well, if you check this week's trout stocking um, uh, uh, website at, at the Mass Fish and Wildlife website, uh, you will see that they're, they've gone as far west as the Swift River in Belchertown. Perhaps by the time you're actually seeing this, gone even further. They dumped some rainbows in there. What I also noticed that's worth noting, worth checking out, is they're still stocking the Cape. And this week, they started adding brown trout. Now, it's in addition to the brookies and rainbows that they've been hitting up on the Cape previously. So, stocking everything now. They are all out there. Plenty of fish in Massachusetts waters for you. Of course, I got a post at thefisherman.com with direct links to all New England State's stocking pages. And then moving on, bridging the gap between Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Got my buddy TJ Kopecki coming back. Uh, took a little bit of a break through the winter, was a little busy with work, wasn't get out fishing as much as I'm sure he would have liked to, but he is back out there fishing. He's got a bunch of different updates. He's got word on the fluke to you puke tournament, blackfish, holdover striped bass, a little word on trout stocking and more. Take it away, TJ. Thanks, Toby. Hey guys, nice to be back. I know I haven't reported in a long time for the fishermen here. Um, just Things are starting to heat up and uh, finally able to get back out and do some fishing. Um, just wanted to talk about some stuff that's happening in the East Bay part of Rhode Island, uh, southeastern Massachusetts. Uh, that's that's mainly where I fish. And uh, I can fill you in on a, on a couple of things that I know. And then some other stuff too that um, has happened in Rhode Island. Uh, the first thing is, is I messaged the Fluke to You Puke. Uh, tournament people uh, just asking if there was going to be a tournament this year and, and I haven't heard anybody talk about it yet but uh, they gave me the nod of no no tournament because of COVID so uh, I mean that's a, a staple fluke tournament in the state of Rhode Island which uh, I always participate in and I'm uh, you know sad to hear that but uh, hey move on till next year maybe uh, next year we'll bring something better um, so you know some sad news for that but uh, moving on, uh, staying in Rhode Island uh, on the East Bay side, uh, to talk season is going to be starting up April 1st in Mass and Rhode Island. Um, if you need bait, crabs, you can go to Lucky Bait. Uh, he's pretty much got everything you need over there for the tog fishing, hook sinkers. Um, I talked to Manny. Uh, he said they're all stocked up, ready to go. Licenses, if you need a license, you can get your license there also. They give you out 
a little holder that comes with your license. It's a, like a, a thing that people show up year round to do just because he hands out that little license holder. Uh, holdover stripers. Heard about some holdover stripers in the Providence River. Uh, shortly, they're going to be moving up into that Seekonk River. The more and more herring that we get that head up into that Seekonk River, they're going to be tailing that herring. So your chances are going to be better. There's a couple of places to fish from the shore up in the East Providence side near Omega Pond, which is uh, typically a herring run in the state of Rhode Island. Uh, but typically they can't get over that anymore. There's no more fish ladder there. But uh, it is a good spot to fish uh, if you want to try for holdovers. Uh, now that this the sun is beating down on this this uh, the bay here and is warming it up, uh, these fish are going to start to get more active. A couple of ponds in my local area. Um, Lure Brook Pond, uh, Firefly and Seekonk. Uh, but we're stocked. I just checked the stocking page for Massachusetts today. So that those two ponds have been stocked. So that's good news for me. Uh, and if you live in Rhode Island and you want to fish a mass, just get yourself a mass fishing license with a trout stamp. And you can come on over and fish in, in our ponds in Massachusetts here until April 10th, I think it is, in Rhode Island. Uh, they still haven't said if they're going to start early like Connecticut did. And I know you said something about that last week, Toby. But I uh, haven't got any word on that either. And I've been checking their website. Uh, but if you know something more than me, then happy to let everybody else know. Um, what else? Uh, just be sure to update your license, actually, uh, in Mass or Rhode Island. And don't forget to get your trout stamp. That's a big thing. If you're going to keep a trout, make sure you have a trout stamp. So, uh, hey, for now, uh, get out there and fish. Things are starting to heat up. Thanks a lot, TJ. Again, really appreciate having you back on board. Look forward to your fishing through the season. And if you out there would like to contribute uh, photos, reports, or even a full-on video like TJ is doing, hit me up, T. Lipinski at thefisherman.com. If you want to do it once, you want to try to do it every week, whenever you happen to get out, doesn't matter. I would love to include you going forward. So shoot me an email. You can get all the details. It is extremely simple. You can shoot the videos on your phone if you want. You don't have to get all fancy production, everything else. Just quick Quick little video clip tell me what's going on maybe drop a photo or two in there and we will take it from there all right moving on into rhode island talk to greg taylor again this week hadn't heard from him in a few weeks apparently he's been hammering away at the striped bass all winter along and he's been switching over to the spring holdover spot he said the uh those traditional winter spots places he was getting them all winter long the deeper holding areas they, the the fish seem to start to spread out a bit my guess is because herring alewives are starting to poke through the rivers and pull them out of those areas plus the water's just warming up so they're more willing to uh, uh explore a little bit more hunt down some fish but uh, uh, again, he's getting in some nice catches um, on a recent outing. Little nice, warm, beautiful day like I've got here while I'm shooting the video. Head out, he headed out that evening and got into, you know, the average small schoolies, but as well as some small slot fish, which puts it into that low 30-inch class, which is a solid fish for, uh, geez, not even the end of March yet. I haven't gotten a striper on the board yet this year, and he's already pulling mid slots. So congratulations there. Um, he said, continue as he's been doing. Uh, most of his action has been on zinger baits uh, with the um, was it the Bomba Shads remain his go-to lately, and he's been rigging them weightless on a, a swim bait style hook. Very productive, especially around herring runs when herring are on, when the fish are a little slower. It doesn't quite have the same sink as a jig head would, so always one of my go-tos early on in the spring as well. Moving on into Connecticut, trout stocking continues daily with some of the trout parks, including places like Wharton Brook, Day Pond, Valley Falls, Chatfield, Hollow, Stratton Brook, and others being stocked in the last week. Now, i got to remind you, keep in mind that if you do fish a trout park, while they do put more fish into there, there's a, uh, a reduced bag limit. It's just two fish per person. Now, generally, these trout parks are in locations to get um, individuals who don't have a uh, the same opportunity to get out and fish, whether they're new to fishing, whether it's where they live, uh, physical handicaps, etc. So they can't hit the standard rivers and streams and bigger lakes that everyone else gets to. So that's why we have the trout parks and it's it's kind of a bit of an unwritten rule, which most of the time I see being followed, but not all the time. Sometimes you'll see it where guys will get a little bit of an ego going. They'll run up 30, 40, 50 fish at a trout park and not letting other people share in the excitement. Um, again, no hard and fast rules, but just consider it. If you're at one of the trout parks and you see someone not doing so well, perhaps help them out. Give them some pointers. 
best case, give them your spot. I've done it many times at the trout park. My son and I always give way to other anglers when we are there. And speaking of that, my son Aiden and I went out this weekend. We heard that Chatfield Hollow had been stocked on Friday, so we got up Saturday midday, had a nice lunch, and went over for a couple of hours of fishing. Now, unfortunately, we didn't have very good luck on the trout, but Aiden got his first largemouth bass of the year. Nice little uh, little largemouth on a Rapala, which he loves fishing. We also saw a bunch of pretty good-sized pickerel uh, staging up in pairs. Wouldn't touch a thing, so I'd have to guess they're doing some pre-spawn action there. But uh, I did see a few of the other anglers around doing really well, especially one of the guys just to the side of us, not 10 feet away banging trout after trout with some really, really nice sized rainbows mixed in. Uh, I think he was throwing a weighted we uh, woolly bugger, excuse me, he did note that he had to get down deep for them. I was trying it with what I had, wasn't able to get in on it, but it was still cool. Had a good time, we all had an, some laughs, good talk, good catching, nice day to be out on the water. Uh, and with this time of the year here in Connecticut, it's time for the herring runs to start uh, uh, filling in. Now I know that there's been herring confirmed since around the last week of February by a couple individuals I speak to. Um, I personally haven't run into any myself just yet. So before I shot the video, I hit three of my early season spots just to see if there was anyone poking around, any scouts. Now unfortunately I didn't see anything. Um, tidal conditions were not perfect. The sun was out a little more than I'd like in the middle of the day to really have a bunch of herring poking around in there. Uh, one of my spots hardly had any water flow running in it yet, which was a little disturbing, but uh, again, I've been hearing there's herring around officially, unofficially. Um, haven't seen them myself. I'm going to continue to check. Maybe next week I'll have some video for you if I'm able to find some, but never too early to start looking. And of course, that means start fishing for stripers around those known herring spots. And then last up, uh, we're just about a week away from the spring opener of blackfish season in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. All three states open up on April 1st, so by the time we got next week's video, that is on April 1st, and you're going to have blackfish, uh, uh, at least the season's going to be open. I don't know if I have any fish chewing, but in light of this, I want to put a, present a little challenge to you. Um, talk to my buddy Joe D'Agostino, owns Joe Bags Outdoors, makes one of my favorite blackfish jigs. Uh, uh, he, he, his blackfish jigs are right up there at the top of the list easily. Uh, anyway, we were talking about it. What I want to do, sort of like I did a couple of years ago with the um, winter flounder, where I had a bit of a bounty on the first confirmed photo of the year. Well, we're doing it for blackfish this year. So what I want is the first person who's able to catch a keeper size blackfish. You can keep it, release it, whatever you want to do. Um, include in the photo, and I'm going to take your word for it that it was of the 16 inch minimum. Include in the photo the April New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's due out next week. It should hit newsstands, your mailboxes by April 1st. So the timing is perfect. So anyway, if you're able to get a photo with the April cover, with that uh, magazine in there, with a keeper blackfish. The first one that comes through, Joe and I are gonna throw you a couple of uh, uh, of his blackfish jigs. Uh, might throw a couple extras in that I've got my personal stash as well. Um, and of course, if the photo is good enough, if it's in ho uh, uh, vertical format, I'd love to drop it on a local weekly cover in here in New England because following next week's edition, we jump right in, once again, resuming the weekly magazine schedule now every week from April first week of April through the end of November we're hitting you weekly with the magazine that's all 38 issues on the season so got a little extra incentive once you get your copy of the magazine or if you're not a subscriber yet hit your local newsstand tackle shop grab a copy of it bring it with you you get that first keeper blackfish um, might throw something special for the just the first uh, uh, blackfish confirmed in New England in the same manner with the cover in the photo. And heck, if you can uh, break the double digit mark, and again, I'll take your word for it, uh, might throw a little extra, extra something in there. We'll have to wait and see. Let's see how this progresses. But uh, good luck out there. If you do want to get out on the opener again next th uh, uh, Thursday, excuse me, April 1st, blackfish season open, 16 inch minimum, different bag limits. So be sure to check the fisherman.com. We got all of the details, all of the regulations, and of course, if you're gonna head out and fish this weekend, you're gonna be heading on over to thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.